Welcome back into Talking Fitchbury. Join today for the Fitchburg Fire Department as we continue our series on Fire Prevention Week. Mark, Malek Mark Malekish is back. Tough name. Jeez, <laughs> give me an easy name. Tell me about it. Uh, no, uh, Mark, uh, thanks for coming back. Uh, today, uh, as we continue talking about Fire Prevention Week, uh, you've had some great topics, but I uh, posed the question, who is the Fitchburg Fire Department? And you came back with uh, a large report here, so I get to uh, pick your brain uh, as uh, as I would anyways on on the fire department. But uh, Fitchburg Fire Department uh, uh, does so many different things, and you've shared some of those things this week, mm -hmm. you know. And I like the idea of the uh, all hazards. You're a department that responds to all hazards. So you think fire department, you might think, oh, let's go some fires. Maybe they go, out, maybe see the ambulance. All hazards. We really are. Um just to step back for a second, uh, one of the reasons that I'm here on FACT TV right now in Fitchburg is because I've admired this fire department for a long time. Uh, when it comes to fire departments in Wisconsin, uh, actually around the nation, um, Fitchburg has been a leader for years and is going to continue to be a leader. Yeah, super proud to be here. Well, we're setting the bar high right out of the right yep. out of the gate. Got to go big. Um, so you guys kind of kicked off a mission and vision uh, piece uh, a little while ago, but mm -hmm. um, it, it's throughout the department, which is really cool. So as you tour the station, you may see this uh, vision, mm -hmm. uh, uh, mission and vision uh, uh, right there on the wall. Um, but I think it's pretty cool, uh, the, the piece they have. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. So our job... Um, can be broken into really sort of four pieces. Um, we serve, right? We serve the community. Uh, there is no other way to talk about what we do other than to serve. Um, we try to re be very respectful of each other. We try to make sure that uh, we're respecting different lifestyles, different people, all of those things as we do our job. Um, and that includes inside the firehouse, right? Um, learn. <clears throat> Man, we're all lifelong learners. Uh, another one of those things that I didn't anticipate when I got into the fire service. Uh, and last but not least, we're leaders, um, which goes back to what I opened with here. Uh, that is um, what we do. We, we want to be at the forefront of the best ways to get things accomplished. You certainly do, and um, we've gone to quite a few of your trainings. Uh, when you talk about the, the learning aspect, uh, the department is constantly training almost every day uh, in some, uh, some aspect, uh, which is, is something to see, uh, but it's to keep the skills up. And it, it, being that I got to be on public safety for a little bit of time, you know, no, no expert by any means, but you have to keep up on your skills. And as a, as a firefighter, as an EMT, as a police officer, th that's a big deal because some things you don't work on, or some things you don't do for a while, and right. then you're called upon to do it in that moment, the heat of the moment, so to right. speak, and you, you got to be ready to go. Yep, so um, we would call those, those big events the, the high acuity, low frequency calls, mm -hmm. right, to, to use the Stephen Covey stuff. Um, <clears throat> we have to be ready, which means we have to be on top of our game for the basics. If you can't do the basics well, you can't do any of it well. <clears throat> and our firefighters, um, they live to train. Um, doesn't matter which firehouse you go to, they're trying to figure it out each day and, and they're out doing something. Um, and, and what's really neat is we have an intern program and our most senior guys are not guys that sit back and go, ah, let the young kids do it. They're right in there with them. And, and I just think that's fantastic. It really is. It really is. Um, as we look at kind of the higher, if you want to just kind of put a, a scope on the, the fire department as a glance, uh, who is it made up of? The number of firefighters, uh, whether paid on call or not, support. What are, what are we looking at? So right now we've got 16 career firefighters. Um, and we have roughly 30 uh, what we call POX or paid on call. And... Um, each day at each station, our crews are made up of a mix. We have uh, career firefighters on every day, um, but we also have our POX staff coming in every day, and they train the same. There is no difference in skill set. There's only a difference in uh, what their chosen profession is. So our POX firefighters are, are doing an awesome job of keeping up their skills, coming in, doing the training with us, being as proficient as we are, as the career guys are, or gals, um, and 
doing that in addition to having a normal life, which is pretty cool. It's a lot. It is. But it, it, uh, it, you are it right. Is. And then you have eight support staff as well. What are support staff? So they come in, um, they're non-firefighting staff. Um, some of them will assist me or the department with fire investigations. They may have been firefighters previously and, and they just no longer either are able or want to be on the line. So they come in and um, they assist us with other functions. Uh, you'll see support staff at our open house. You'll see support staff um, doing the functions at a large fire scene that we just don't have additional firefighters to do. So they, they come in and assist us with that. Uh, under a uh, $3.9 million budget, uh, you're training a huge amount of hours. You already mentioned it, uh, marked here at 3,919 hours, uh, which is an incredible amount of hours uh, for the department. Um, but that, I think, holds true to what you were saying about uh, no matter uh, who you are in the fire department, you're training. Uh, but the other side of it, too, is doing inspections. And it, it, this one's right on your uh, your job uh, duty, so, you know, got to throw it in there. Uh, but why? what's the importance of doing the uh, 2,000? 423 inspections which so is a lot it is it is an incredible amount um, and that does include reinspections um, but the idea of going out and doing fire inspections is to go into uh, any given business or any any given um, place of operation and be consultative to help them figure out ways to keep a fire from happening and um, sometimes we're viewed as restrictive. We try not to be. We try to, to work with um, our occupancies to teach them and educate them on why they shouldn't have 75 uh, uh, extension cords <laughs> or why they need to make their fire extinguishers, uh, make sure that they're up to date. Um, but that's the job. The other function of that is what an awesome opportunity to get our firefighters inside of each and every business. Um, that knowledge really comes in handy at, at 3.30 in the morning when they're going in and they need to find their way around a building that may be dark and smoky and all of that. To have that uh, familiarity with the business or the building, um, that's stuff you just, uh, you can read all the books all you want, but you can't get that. Absolutely. Well, I think some risk management, too, as mentioned, and I think that's part of it as well, so it works well. Uh, the final area is uh, how many calls you run each year, and a lot of, lot of different data here uh, that uh, takes place, but the number is only growing, and if that was a place I was going to pick on for you is knowing that the, the calls do keep coming, and every year it goes up. They do. As you mentioned, we're an all-hazards department, so um, we're really out there doing whatever services our, our community needs. Uh, I'll give you for instance, yesterday I uh, went out to an apartment where a gal had, um, she'd forgotten she had eggs boiling. And she really, there was no fire danger, there was no fire started, but she wanted to know how to air out her apartment. Okay, well, uh, as a firefighter, um, knowing how to ventilate a building is important. So I ran out. I helped her set up some fans. I helped her open up the right windows. And literally within minutes, we had the smell of those eggs. Not completely gone, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. almost gone to the point where uh, she didn't feel like she was going to gag inside the apartment anymore. All hazards, right? Um, so just out there doing the thing. Yeah, and uh, at, at the end of 2023, 20, uh, 2,631 calls. And like you said, it's a mix of, of calls and mm -hmm. um, uh, nevertheless, as you mentioned, you guys are going to be there for every single one of them, no matter what it is, and be ready. Yep. Just, just for uh, for instance, I've got um, July numbers right in front of me. Um, 130 times we went out to assist the ambulance. 130 times. That's a lot in a 30-day month. Wow. A 31-day month. Um, fire alarms and, and uh, what we call still alarms, possible structure fires, 66 times in one month. Um, motor vehicle accidents, we had eight of them, um, and then we did have two working structure fires back in July. So it, it all adds up to really quite a number of calls, uh, and we never know from day to day what we're going to go see. 
Yeah, the firehouses are very active here in Fitchburg, uh, and the crews are as well, but I think uh, this quick snapshot kind of gives you a good picture of uh, what's going on there behind the scenes, why the training is so important, the staff uh, second to none, uh, and then just being prepared for anything at any part of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if, if we could predict them, um, we could we could dial in that <laughs> response a whole lot better, but we just don't know what's coming. So. Yeah. All right. Well, appreciate the time and the uh, the update. We'll continue our series uh, all this week, and I encourage you if you haven't checked out any of uh, the ones that we've done. We've talked about different fire prevention pieces and focusing today on our uh, fire department as a whole. Uh, Mark, appreciate your time all this week. It's been awesome. Yeah, glad to be here.